Courts across Nigeria remain closed as the Judicial Staff Union of Nigeria continues its strike, leaving trial lawyers stranded. We'll be talking with a senior advocate of Nigeria about this. Also coming up is an interview with former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, Kingsley Mogalu, on why he has decided to run for president again. And Twitter deletes President Muhammad Buhari's comment for violating its rules. The Nigerian government reacting by saying the social media company is trying to polarize the country. And you're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. Uh, taking steps one day at a time to wrap up this week. And uh, someone was saying yesterday how fast the year is going. Mm -hmm. I think I would agree. Pretty soon we're going to be in September and, you know, it's going to be a new year again. So welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for waking up with us this morning. So much, as always, that we have to share with you and to discuss this morning. But we'll start with what's trending. Yes, what's trending this morning? First of all, we know how the presidents, you know, put out statements just yesterday saying, you know, for all those who are trying to divide Nigeria through violence, through, you know, insecurity, that he was going to come down heavily on them. And he reminded Nigerians of the civil war, saying that people who are, you know, alive now are too young to know the consequences of the war and that he was on the battlefield for about 30 months and is going to show people or remind people what it meant at that time. You know, there was a lot of debate about this. We talked about this right here on The Breakfast yesterday. Had analysts as well as Ademola Akimbola of the Podium Media, you know, share their, their thoughts on this particular matter. And um, before we knew it, Twitter swung into action. They put a caveat saying, this tweets, you know, breaches our rules. It violates Twitter rules and they took it down. So lots of reactions have been pouring in. The federal government has reacted, uh, saying basically that um, Twitter is trying to be partial when, you know, during the NSAS protest, people, you know, went around vandalizing government property. Twitter never took down those tweets. And, you know, they tried to comp um, compare that with the president's tweets. But I really don't see the basis for comparison with the NSAS protests and the president's tweets. So we may need more clarity from the president regarding that comparison there. But Twitter has removed the president's tweets for seeming to incite some sort of violence, you know, you know when he talked about, you know, the civil war. And uh, there's a particular word he used. Can you remind me of that? He's going to sh teach them in the language they understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so there is that. You know, quite um, vague and threatening. So my angles. Um, um, so, you know, this is from a regular Nigerian on social media angle. Now, there has, mm. you know, been different levels to this. You know, it's first of all starts with, um, you know, the Nigerian people. You know, almost seemingly, you know, not being bold enough to protest. You know, when they have concerns because of how the government treats protesters, how the government has always, and the Bud language government has always shown towards anyone who um, decides that they want to protest against the government. You know, in Eagle Square, anywhere across the country, of course, including the NSARS mm -hmm. uh, protest, uh, the government has never been acceptable, you know, towards um, uh, protesters, um, has never been welcoming, rather, towards protesters. And that freedom to protest um, has, you know, seemingly be, been taken away from, uh, from a lot of Nigerians. So there is that, you know, and so Nigerians also, you know, moved away from, you know, having to always go on the streets to protest to taking their protest into social media. It started, you know, months and months ago, I think it was early last year, with people responding every time the president's handle tweeted with IFB, which simply means I follow back, you know, in short terms on Twitter. But it was irrelevant, you know, um, you, with regards to whatever the president was tweeting. You can't just be typing IFB. So you would see a long thread of persons responding, thousands of people responding with just IFB. So it seemed like their own way of protesting against whatever it is that the president's handle was tweeting. Um, whatever information didn't matter to you know, a lot of people on social media then. The um, uh, president, uh, well, who, who, whoever his Twitter handler is, then um, went forward you know, to avoid that and disabled comments on the president's tweet, which was you know, a little shameful that you know, the president of a country uh, puts out a message and doesn't, you know, allow for people to respond. Um, yes, you might say, oh, you know, the trolling was getting too much, but it doesn't, you know, it's really expressing what Nigerians felt towards that handle and towards whatever information that the handle was uh, putting out. Um, and so it went beyond that, you know, uh, from being, um, from the IFBs disabling comments to 
people then saying yesterday or two days ago that, well, this tweet seems threatening. And I guess hundreds of thousands of people started reporting the tweet um, and flagging it on Twitter. <clears throat> and so that's what led to it, you know, it being disabled um, on social media. Um, for Lai Mohammed uh, saying, um, you know, I'm referring to the NSARS protest uh, and all of that. Um, if they felt, if, you know, you know, at that time they felt like any of those posts and any of those tweets were harmful, they should simply have done the same thing as, and, you know, report the tweets. You know, if you don't report it, Twitter very likely wouldn't see it and declare it, you know, uh, harmful and, you know, would ignore it. So you report the tweet. And if you don't do that, then, you know, and of course, like you said, you know, there's really no basis for, comp for comparison here. People were only putting out videos on what exactly was going on in the country. They're putting out uh, um, uh, videos of police brutality uh, showing up of what's facts. going on. And it's the same thing that every other um, on-ground reporter, every person right now on social media is a reporter, is, you know, a journalist, takes, makes a video, puts it out there. That's no crime. Mm -hmm. um, so there is that. But the one that really triggers me is the fact that we've had 200 or 156 uh, 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 kids kidnapped in, in uh, Niger State. We've had 52 people die in Ebony State, according to the papers. We've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people kidnapped. We've had Greenfield. We've had the, the uh, first mechanization. Numerous, you know, um, incidents in the last couple of months. Lai Mohammed hasn't addressed the press um, on any of these issues. He hasn't, you know, so quickly mm -hmm. called a press conference or a press briefing to address the country um, and or the president himself. Um, on any of these issues, but a tweet was deleted yesterday, and he immediately found time to call for a press conference to address Twitter and say that, oh, Twitter's uh, actions in Nigeria is suspect. So that really tells you what is important to the Nigerian government. Going back to where I said, you know, that they've not been able to accept or understand criticism in any way, and any time that a person, a group, um, you know, um, um, a political party, anything, decides to speak against and say, you know, criticize any of their moves, they have, in the last five years, not been able to stomach any form of criticism, including from Twitter. That's exactly what he showed you yesterday. So they wouldn't speak on any of the big issues disturbing Nigeria. They wouldn't speak on insecurity. They wouldn't speak on death. They wouldn't speak on kidnapping. They wouldn't speak on, on, edu on the educational sector, on um, infrastructure, anything. There's no press conference for any of all those things. But there is a press conference to complain that Twitter deleted um, or took action against a tweet that seemed to have violated their own policies. It's shameful. Talking about that press conference, let's uh, take a look at, at it and hear what uh, Lai Mohammed said. Twitter may have its own rules. It's not a universal rule. Any organization that gives directives to its members to attack police stations, to kill policemen, to attack correctional centers, to kill warders. Are you not saying that Mr. President does not have the right to express his dismay and anger about that? We are, we are the one guilty of double standards. Okay, so that was uh, Lai Mohammed there you know, asking if the president doesn't have a right to express his own self. And we, we put out a poll yesterday on Twitter asking Nigerians what they think about, you know, Twitter removing uh, Buhari's tweets for violating its rules. And um, we had about um, 68 votes. 76% of those people who voted said it was the right thing to do. It was, it, Twitter was right for pulling down uh, the president's tweet, for deleting the president's tweet. 6% uh, said Twitter was wrong. 15% said they, they didn't really care much about that. And 3% said they were undecided. But the ma majority of voters, 76% of people who voted, said Twitter was right to pull down the tweet of the president who said, you know, they were going to treat the young people and those who are, um, you know, protesting or those who are, you know, just creating chaos in the South. So we're going to teach them and trick them in the language they will understand. Well, by the way, it wasn't a whole tweet that was deleted. It was just that particular one. There was a thread that was, yes. deleted. It was about um, four or five tweets long. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just that particular one that was deleted. So a reference you know, to civil war. Yeah, you know, so I, I really don't know what the problem is. You know, if every other tweet was allowed, if the president was allowed to speak and, you know, express himself like Lai Mohammed has said, 
Um, but that particular, the use of language in that particular one was a problem, then I don't know what, you know, what we're complaining about. For the longest time, the president has been able to express himself on Twitter. Same thing with Donald Trump and every other person. But immediately, you go beyond whatever, you know, Twitter's policies are. You know, you've violated those policies and, you know, action will be taken. Nobody's been flogged. No, nobody's been sanctioned. A tweet was deleted. Um, and I don't know why it um, requires a press conference or a press briefing to complain and cry bitterly um, and Oof. blow Qatar, you know, from the nose uh, because the tweet was deleted. Very so another, another, you know, interesting story, another top, top trending story was that the House of Representatives yesterday receives a proposal to change the name of Nigeria to UAR. And see, this matter, I don't know why it's been a, a joke. Everything in Nigeria becomes like a joke, but it's been a very big joke on social media. You need to see Nigerians saying, my fellow you Aryans. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we know that um, a tax consultant, Adelege Jokotoye, apologies if I didn't pronounce that right. You know, he submitted a, pr a proposal to change the name of Nigeria from Nigeria to the United African Republic or he said, you, I can't pronounce this, pardon me, or United al Kebulan Republic. I, I don't know what that means, but he went on to explain that, you know, al United al Kebulan Republic means United Mother of Mankind. United Mother of Mankind Republic. And he says that, you know, the name United Africa Republic just you know, encapsulates all of Nigeria's diverse, you know, cultures, ethnicities. Nigeria is made up of hundreds group, hundreds of groups that we need to be united. You know, he says, we're at a crossroads in our history. It's mandatory we change our name to reflect a new beginning, which will be ushered in with a new constitution. He says the name, you know, was imposed on us by our past colonial masters, so we need to change that. I do understand that many countries have done that. You know, even streets and monuments in other parts of the world, they say these were signposts of colonialism. These are names that were imposed on us, forced down our throats. Now we are independent, now we're free. So we should change our name to what we decide as a people. But I don't know, Nigerians are not really taking this right. You know, oh, wow. on Twitter, people say, <laughs> Naramali says he wants to be the one to sing the new Uarian <laughs> anthem. <laughs> you know, so it's just, it's just a well, whole joke on Twitter. Um... You know, yes, you know, he might have a point, you know, with, um, you know, talking Singing about the anthem. origin, no, the origin, okay. you know, of uh, Nigeria, you know, I think, you know, it says, you know, that it starts from someone's girlfriend um, yes. and Niger area and some of that, you know, and then there's mm. also history of uh, slavery and, you know, the, yes. you know, the union and all of that, um, that brought together that name. But um, I think it's, it's mostly a joke to a lot of people because, you know, if you, if you, um, I need to learn to stop saying, you know. There is, if, if you look at the plethora, if you look at the next 100 biggest challenges Nigeria has, um, its name, you know, would not be. If you look at the next 100 things that, you know, must be fixed in, in order to put us on the right path and all, in order to mm -hmm. um, maybe also, you know, give us a better country, um, the name would not be, you know, a part of that. And so, uh, for me, it just shows that while, you know, everybody is having their own challenges here and there, people are mm -hmm. trying to buy petrol. Um, I'm hearing that the Naira is now hitting 500 and all of that. The, uh, security challenges, people are kidnapped, people are looking for money to buy ransom. There's somebody somewhere just saying, mm, what's my problem today? Change the name. Let's change the name, <laughs> you know, so. So just, just <laughs> jokes also. Someone said, <laughs> UAR went to be uranium. <laughs> There and people, you know, more jokes, people said, um, do, does Nigeria or, you know, the proponents of this bill feel that the United, the United um, States of America is the reason why this <laughs> So there's just, you know, you know like we United say, Arab Emirates. See, um, Nigerians would always throw jokes maybe that, about things like Funny enough, that might just be the trick. Oh, really? Yeah, because the UAE seems to be pretty yeah, put together. Pretty, yeah, well put together. <laughs> the United States also. So we probably need to do that. You know, it might just be the answer to our so problem. To but people but the from thing two is, different tribes are about to find like, oh, we are united. So, no. so, so the, the thing is, the thing is, um, and one other thing that a comment that I saw, uh, someone saying, um, if you like change the name to United um, Akara Republic, what? China will not forget who is owing them money. <laughs> <laughs> You can't go to China tomorrow and say, well, Nigeria was owing you money. 
<laughs> but where you are all now, things be gone. all debts are cancelled. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right, Osarge. Jokes aside, I feel our challenges and our problems are much more or you know, way beyond th our name. Yeah. And if anything, I think the name Nigeria has become so powerful, so significant. It has been, it is now a rallying point. The name Nigeria, the name Niger, there's so much pride, despite all the, all the division in the country, there's so much pride in that name. The name Nigeria carries so much weight. Regardless of who gave it to us, we have given that name meaning. And I feel that's what's important. Well, um, good luck to... Um, the Iranians. The guy and uh, his uh, new country. <laughs> his Stay new with us. country. Uh, we'll be back after this short break. We're moving into Off the Press. What major stories have made the headlines this morning? We'll be sharing with you with uh, Ezekiel Nyaya Talk. We'll be back. <laughs>